Hi everybody, welcome to Extraordinary People. I am Patricia. I'm going to introduce my guest to you today. So my guest today appeals to everyone, absolutely everyone. We all share this one thing in common and that is our brain. It is impossible to function without one. Think of the brain as a central computer that controls all the body's functions. It interprets information from the outside world and embodies the essence of the mind and soul. Intelligence, creativity, emotion, and memory are a few of the many things governed by the brain. Are we using it to the maximum of our ability? We are not! So in my guest's own words, no one gave us an owner's manual to operate the brain. My guest helps people understand how the brain works so they can work on improving it. Intelligence, memory, attention, focus, and confidence are not skills we get at birth but skills we build, and this is exactly his Brainer Academy's aim, to help people make a difference one brain at a time. My guest will captivate you with his style and knowledge. You will be amazed and boosted by what we are actually capable of achieving. He is so generous to share his expertise publicly on social media, and even more generous to share it further with us here today. So get ready for a pumped up episode. Let us welcome my guest, Michel, the brainer on. Thank you, thank you, Patricia. Hi, thank Michel. You for having me. How Hello. are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm yes. so happy to do this. We've been talking about this thank for you. such a while, and yes. we're finally here. I'm very excited too. Me it, too. It's, it's so always much. a good time talking about brains. Yeah. Humans, why we do what we do, what can we do about it to to become better people. I and think so because the world. it's a very trendy subject yes. because everybody talks about memory. Oh, I'm forgetful. I can't concentrate and all that kind of stuff. Yes. So while I was researching <laughs> a little bit, now you're the expert here. So while I was re researching, I read that the brain is the most complicated organism in the universe. Yes, it <laughs> That's is. That's just very fascinating. True. It has more neurons than there's stars in the sky. Yes. Actually, we have. One trillion brain cells, or you can wow. also refer to it as a million million. Wow. It's one, and then you have 12 zeros behind the one. It's incredible. Yeah, and every neuron that we have, every brain cell actually, that mm -hmm. we have, has its own brain that is called the neuron. Wow. So it's like having a brain within a brain within a brain. Wow. And whatever we do in life, whatever thought that we have in our head, mm -hmm. is an, an accumulation of experiences that we have, and... It's linking those neurons together to form a, a certain thought pattern. We call it a thought pattern. So it's okay. a pattern of connections. Mm -hmm. So imagine if we have one trillion brain cells, That's the incredible. amount of, of connections we can do is, is, is just insane. The potential that yeah. we have. It's around, if you, wanna like, if you want to draw zeros, let's right. say the amount to see how many words we can fit or thoughts right. we can fit, just to see the big amount of zeros that will be next to the... Um, to the aligned mm -hmm. with the number of uh, patterns that we can do, you would need 10.5 million kilometers just to write. Wow. Like we said, we have one trillion brain cells. Yes. If you want to do this to the power one trillion to see how many connections you can do, you would need a line that goes 10.5 million kilometers, kilometers just to draw how many zeros you will have next to it. This is how much connections we can do. That's incredible. Yes. Well, it just thinking like where we started, I mean, we just were dropped on the earth and everything, yeah. where we're at now, I mean, we're just exploring the whole universe. It's yes. just fascinating where we, where we got. Actually, we might know more about the universe than we know about the brain somehow, because yeah, true. there is so many things that we still don't understand. Yeah. We, we could associate it to, to the unknown, or maybe we don't have the technology yet, mm -hmm. but everything we know about the brain has been discovered around 40 to 50 years back mm -hmm. around 80 percent of what we know about the brain so there is mm -hmm. still more to discover there's still a lot of unknown mm -hmm. but what we all know it's like the more you know the brain it's the less you know it's very similar to what it's Socrates fascinating. said the more you know the, the more you know that you know nothing so right exactly yeah. so you concentrated on studying mnemonics yes. and meta-learning 
Yes. So can you like define each one a little bit for us? Because sure. this is how you built your course based on this, yes. right? Okay. So I always say that there are two pillars to, to a good brain, a healthy brain. Mm -hmm. uh, the first pillar is the mnemonics, which are the memory techniques. These are techniques that can date back to 2,500 years ago. ago. Okay. And uh, these techniques, they help us memorize a lot of information in less time, and they help us organize the information in our memory. Mm. And then the meta learning is about the word meta means the science. So when we say meta science, it's mm -hmm. the science of science. Meta learning is the science of learning. Oh, metaphysics. Is metaphysics the science and the science of physics. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So when we talk about meta learnings, it's we learn how to learn. Okay. As you said, then at the beginning of the episode, no one gave us an owner's manual. We right. don't know how to operate the brain. That's what you said. I was quoting you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, we all know how to think, how to react, how to observe, analyze, understand, and, and also create. We can create things. This is why we are creative people. Mm -hmm. If it's in terms of products, services, uh, solutions, and medicine, right. and, and whatever area of life, we create. Right. But at the same time, we don't know how to do it. Like We don't have uh, steps to follow okay. to understand how the brain really works and how can we make it better. Because no matter how good we are, there is always... Uh, a point where we can make it more efficient. I always okay. like... Um, more efficient. Okay. Yes, it's about efficiency and right. about making it more effective and understanding how it operates. So if managing I wanna... the information kind of thing? Exactly, it's about okay. managing. Actually, we have five steps. Right. So would you like to talk about them now? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So we have five steps to understand how we learn in general. And when mm -hmm. we talk about learning, it means learning anything. It could be a song, learning to cook, learning a new language, anything mm -hmm. in life. We go through five stages. Okay. So the first stage, I always like to do the, the, the movement because it helps us to, to memorize. Okay. We receive the information. Right. So I'm taking okay. information so in takes... and I'm receiving it. Okay. I'll How do, do it I? With you. Yes. How okay. do I take the, 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 the information through my five senses? It's right. either an information going through my eyes, what I see, mm. what I smell, what I taste, what I hear, and what I feel. That's it. There are no other ways. Okay. So once I receive the information, I start analyzing it. And I'm doing a circular motion because it's... Backwards. Yeah. Inside. So it's like you're loading the information. You okay. know the loading bar? Yeah. It's the same concept. So we start analyzing what we took in. So you took some words from me, I took some words from you, I mm -hmm. analyze them and I try to understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's super fast. If it's something like words, mm -hmm. you do it in split seconds. You can understand the combinations of letters I'm throwing at you. Yeah. You make a picture out of them, you understand what I'm saying. Oh, this is remind what... me, I'm going to ask you something about that. Okay. Sure. So think. this is what everyone right now is doing. They are right. listening to us. Right. It's a combination of words. Yeah. And these combinations, they form different meanings mm -hmm. that are linked to pictures and meanings in our heads. Okay. So once we receive the information, we start analyzing them, we understand them. Mm -hmm. The third step is to organize them. Okay. So I do this movement like it's like you're organizing like the information shelves. on the shelves. Yes, right. exactly. Okay. So when you organize the information, this makes it easier for you to navigate through this information. It's like going to the kitchen. I know where, where, where the forks are. I know where mm -hmm. the pots and pans. I know mm -hmm. everything around because it's my kitchen. I've organized the kitchen. Right. But here, the difference is I'm simply organizing the information. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to repeat. We receive, receive. We analyze. We organize. And then we store. It's like we have like a key. Like the lock and key. Yes, and we lock the key in and <laughs> okay. we store the information. <laughs> okay. So now whenever I want to go back to my memory to find an information that I need to complete my work, to complete anything I do in my life, I'll simply go inside. It's organized. Mm -hmm. I pick it up and I retrieve it. So the last okay. uh, stage is the retrieval of information. You're reminding me like we can do a trendy dance challenge. Yes, definitely. This is why like when you do trends, like yeah. when we're kids, yeah. it's very easy for us to memorize because we do, we do the motions, we move, we sing. So mm -hmm. we are using more than one sense at a time. So this is why right now we did receive information, analyze it, organize it, store and retrieve. That's it. So anything you do in life, if you miss one item or one one i don't know maybe it's a name of a person mm -hmm. name of a book maybe it's a, a random information if you don't find it it's not because you you you, uh, you lo it's not about forgetting it's about losing okay so what is the difference here yeah of course we're talking if you're paying attention because if you're not paying attention it does, it's not even going in so right. that is not even the first stage it's not applicable okay but if you are paying attention and you receive the information you analyze it and you understand it. And then you forget to organize it because we don't know how. 
going mm -hmm. back to how the brain works. If you don't know how to organize and store, this is why we start losing information. So is it like a question of focus and concentration? Uh, it is. It is about we have to learn how to focus because yeah. it's like we, we are in a receiving mode. Right. We, are, we are starting to receive the information yeah. in. So we need to understand how we receive this information. We need to start working on our five senses. How can we mm -hmm. uh, optimize them? and be better listeners, better receptors of information. Mm -hmm. And then once they are in, we learn how to organize them. Because the moment we don't organize them, the memory is massive. I'm going to give you a number, it's going to be shocking. Okay. Like, the memory is capable of memorizing 4.7 billion books. Wow. Around 4.7 billion books, we're talking on average a book of 300 pages. Really? Yes. Like, and, is it more than a computer? No. It's not more than a computer, right. but what you can do right now, now I don't know, in the future it's going to be different because there's yeah. the AI, the artificial intelligence. Yeah, I wanted to ask so you about I've, that later. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say it's not as fast as a computer, but for now, what, what we can do, the possibilities are like tremendous. Wow. Like, we don't even need to compare ourselves to the computer because what we are actually doing right now is already impressive. But, okay, so you're saying 4.6 or 4.8? 4.7 billion books. books. Yes, we can memorize four point like from from the first page from cover to cover as we but say. But how many are we memorizing now? Mm, we're not. So <laughs> it goes back to the five steps. Why? Because we get a book, we start reading the book, we are receiving okay. information, and we analyze it. We understand the information. Okay. But then it stops here. Okay. We don't get the chance to organize it and to store it. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that after a moment or after a while, maybe in two months or one, two years, mm -hmm. you would pick up the book. And you will read what is written on it. You'll remember. You would remember. Right. So this is called, there is, are two things. There are recall and there is something else that is called, um, um, how do we say it? Um, now I'm doing the loading. I'm searching in my memory right. for the word. It's um, recall. I hope the connection is quick. Yeah, yeah. It's not that quick. <laughs> Sometimes not that quick. Sometimes when... it's at the tip of your tongue and then you just Yeah, like... yeah. So it's about... Um, you think about it, so Retrieve. it's really cool. I'm not really good. It's, it's um, it, it'll to come it. it will come. It it'll will come. come. It'll come. Mm. This is a good exercise. Live. Yeah, yeah. When you're trying to speak, um, even if it's a camera, there's mm -hmm. always like, I talked about this once in a video about uh, Miss Lebanon. There's yeah. always this this small um, pressure of, yeah. of having to manage too many informations and trying to organize everything in your head. So sometimes it could give quickly. you like a brain freeze. Yeah, it has yes, to be and quick. it's quickly. Oh, brain freeze. So you're yeah. going through a brain freeze right now. Um, not, a, not a big one. It's no. just like one word. Yeah. So usually brain freeze is like you stop talking and you don't know what to do. Okay. So with training, you start knowing how to redirect the conversation, how mm -hmm. to how to like uh, use a word instead of the other. But here, yeah, I don't want to use this because the word is very important. So it's, it's recall and uh, recognition. Here it is. Uh -huh. We found it. Okay. So, we're Recogn unfrozen now. Yes, we're unfrozen. So the recognition part is that when you pick the book and you read it, you can recognize, oh yes, I know this book. I've read it before. I know the ideas. I know the example. I can remember them. Mm -hmm. This is recognition. Mm -hmm. You do it once you look at it. Right. So it has to be in front of you. Mm -hmm. While the recall is using the information that you have stored inside of your oh, memory. Okay. There's the difference. the difference. Right. And this difference makes the whole difference. Mm -hmm. Because once you have um, good recall and like you can recall the information not only recognize it it means that you have full confidence it okay. means that you know what you're talking about and you have it within your your brain your massive okay. warehouse okay so if you're losing information it's because most probably it wasn't stored properly it wasn't organized so when you go inside and you look for it you don't know where to look we were talking about 4.7 billion books. This is how right. much you can put information. And already you have billions, if not trillions, of information and words right. and sounds and smells and tastes and things inside of your head and experiences. Right. So if they're not organized properly, you're not forgetting. You are losing where you've put them. It's that simple. This is how you should look at your brain. Does it have anything to do with age? Because everybody says when you get older, you start yes. to forget and, you know, people are, oh, I have Alzheimer's now, I'm old. <laughs> you, yes. know, you know this, the refrain, yes. you know, people, what they say. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to divide them, this into two parts. I'm going to start by answering your question. Okay. Age plays a big role, definitely. Oh, but it's not for the reason that we think about. Okay. So it's not because we're getting older that we forget. Okay. It's because over a longer period of time, 
we are not using the brain efficiently. So the brain is like is a muscle. Is this a question of efficiency? Yes, it's I was going to ask if it was a question of routine. It's a, it, it, routine is included in, in your training. So once okay. you have the proper routine, you train your brain efficiently on a daily basis. And when we talk about training, we're not talking about hours. It's about minutes. Like literally right. 10 to 20 minutes is enough if you do the right thing. Okay. So if times pass by for a long period mm -hmm. and we're not training the brain, it's like a muscle. It's going to start diminishing in size even the size of the brain yeah. is going to start shrinking because you're not using it so the brain thinks i'm, I'm not why would i like spend energy on this organ so, of course not going to like shrink too much but yeah. it's going to shrink in size yeah. it's going to start uh, being less efficient and less performant mm -hmm. so it's because we spent a longer time not working the brain out it's not because we're aging so the brain okay. is is in opposite direction of muscles and and uh, bones Okay. With age, you start having less bone dense bones density, and right. and you have less muscles. Right. And the brain, if you keep on working on it, it's fine. If you have the good habits, we're gonna talk about the ten habits. Oh, okay. It's fine, and it gets even better, because the memory is oh, about amazing. you build information on top of each other. Why are you Patricia today? Because you are the combination and the accumulation mm -hmm. of all experiences you've experienced in life, what right. you studied, how you've been raised. The countries you've visited, the cultures you know about, the books you've read. The people I talk with. The, the people you talk with, exactly. Yeah. So over time, the more time you have, the more you're going to feed your brain new, mm -hmm. um, new feelings, new emotions, and new information. Okay. So definitely, age is on your side if you know how to yeah. use it. So and that it becomes your enemy if you don't know how to use it. Okay. Yes. So that gives us hope and a little bit more definitely. drive definitely. to continue. Yes. So did you want to tell us about the 10 steps? Sure. Okay. So now if we're going to talk about the 10 steps, and this mm -hmm. is applicable for anyone mm -hmm. from ages, from small, like young, not small, right. from young ages up to people who are very old. Okay. The first What's step, very old for you? Mm, well, I'm well, not well, going to give a number. No, I don't know. I mean, like a I'm, very I'm old talking time. like a scientific number. I mean, like at nine years old, can you still sure, adopt sure, yes. these habits? Yes, you, we have okay. people who have like healthy diets, who are who know how to manage their stress, who, okay. who keep on educating themselves. They're okay. above 100 and they still have sharp very brain. good sharp memory, right. very good uh, condition in their brains. They okay. know how to access information. Okay. Of course, now you can look at them and you can tell that they are getting old. Right. But the brain is there. Okay. Because it's well That's trained. Oh, yes. Okay, amazing. So there is okay. no, there's no, literally, there's no number because the number is, is actually directly linked to the lifestyle. Mm. You could see someone, I have people who are 20 years old who come to me and they tell me, Michelle, I'm starting to, 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 uh, to lose uh, my memory. To lose my memory. Right. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I can't focus for more than one minute. I watch a movie. Mm. In the middle of the movie, I have to, up, to pick my phones 10 times. That's so, a different subject we're yes, going to get to later. Yeah, okay. But I mean, it's, it's not about age. Okay. So back to the 10 habits. Right. The first thing is a healthy brain diet. Mm -hmm. And a very good book about this is from Dr. Lisa Mosconi. It's called Brain Food. Dr. Oh, okay. Lisa Mosconi, Brain okay. Food. It's that simple, Brain Food. Okay. So she talks about the good food that we can eat. Mm -hmm. um, you can read the book, check all the, the types. Um, it's what better. does she suggest? You hear like salmon and omega yes, and the like walnuts. There are ten, also 10 types of food that are really good uh, based on what she, she explains in the book. Um, we can talk about eggs. Eggs are good. I, oh, really? I can't explain why because I didn't study no. nutrition, but I'm just going to list what she said in the yeah, book. Yeah. So eggs are really good. Oh, I didn't know eggs were good for the brain. Yes, eggs are good. Then we have uh, avocado. Yeah. They're really good for the brain. The good fats. Yes. Then number three, we have fish. Yeah. Fish oil, salmon, tuna, any any type of fish that is fatty, yeah. because the brain is very fatty, omega, so it likes good fat. Omega threes. Yes, yeah. it likes the good type of fat. Okay. Uh, number four is broccoli. Broccoli is really good mm. for the brain. Number five I is like blueberries or any types of yeah, berries. Yeah, that's yes. true. I read about that. Okay. Yes, any type of berries, but the most the most nutritious one for the brain is the blue are the blueberries. The, everything that's dense in color, I feel. Uh, yes, no. the, 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 also the shape represents what is good for the brain. We're going to get to it in the number 10. Mm, okay. So the fifth one is, is, blueberry, is blueberry, and we said any type of berries is good. Uh, it has high levels of antioxidant. Mm -hmm. So just so we know why it's important, because first, the good fat are good because the brain is made of up to 65% of, of the brain is made of fat. Oh. So when you're eating fat and you're drinking good water, you're giving good nutrition to your brain. Just common sense. Just in brackets. Yes. Sometimes they say when you diet too much, it's not good 
for the brain. Am I right? Or is there mm. a relation or am I... A, if, I kind of heard this once. And, you diet like you deprive like you yourself have, maybe yeah, from something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would... I would say that there's a big role of of the deprivation on on the mental state. Okay. I wouldn't go into the the the, the scientific or medical okay. um, aspect because I I don't know how to explain. I don't okay. know. I don't have the the right. Uh, okay. I would need to the, do some right research first. Right. Okay. Yes, that would be better. But definitely, there is a big mental impact when we diet too much. Mm -hmm. We deprive ourselves. The brain goes into a mode of starvation mode. It goes into something called. Um, fight or fight response. We feel right. like everything around us is trying to get us uh, so your brain's killed. Focus maybe focus will change. Yes. Okay. So it affects us. Okay. But from a medical perspective, I'd rather not talk about no, it. I don't yeah. have the right uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. information right now. Okay. So we were talking about the, um, uh, the, the about blueberries, right. and we said that blueberries are high in uh, antioxidant. Mm -hmm. So the brain, when we use the brain, it's like any anything else. When you use it, something with time, it starts accumulating some some stuff like for example if you if you use a generator it's gonna start getting out co2 and whatever mm -hmm. the brain it gets some um we call it the uh, it becomes toxins we have some new uh, toxins released in the brain okay. so these toxins are normal it's not something like uh, bad it's normal when you use okay. the brain it becomes uh, we have some toxins that are being um it's like a motor and it's just yes. like a, okay. yes so instead of the co2 it's the toxins okay how can we get these toxins out and flush them out mm -hmm. in is when we eat um, food that are high in uh, antioxidant food mm. so there's less oxidation it helps us fight okay the, the, the toxins mm -hmm. get them out and when we sleep and drink well and the sleep is yes. super important we're gonna yes. get there anyway yes so this is why we're just talking about we're going in circles a bit just like to get all the ideas it's, it's, it's too much it's, right. there are too many things to There's talk about so much to talk we don't about. want to, i don't want to get people lost so back to the food right the fifth one was the blueberries mm -hmm. then number six is um number six was Walnuts? coconut oils Coconut oil. Yes, okay. coconut oil is really Specifically good for the brain. Specifically coconut. Yes. Okay. Olive oil is also very good. Anything that is from the Mediterranean um, diet is mm -hmm. very important. It's written in the book. I read. Yeah, I read yeah. the Mediterranean diet. We have is a the good best. diet. Yeah, yes. we have a good diet. So and then number seven is turmeric or tur turmeric. 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 Yeah. How do we say it? Tur turmeric. Turmeric. Yeah. So the stuff in Arabic. So turmeric yeah. is really good for the brain. Yeah, also, it has very high in antioxidant. Mm -hmm. Back again. This is why I was explaining about the toxins in the brain. Antioxidant is antitoxins. It helps us fight mm. the toxins. Okay. Uh, number eight is greens. Anything that is green is really good for the brain. Spinach. Spinach. Uh, artichoke. Eat I don't your know. spinach. Yeah, eat your spinach. <laughs> it's gonna get your brain big. Yeah. Uh, because you know it's 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 not true that if you eat spinach it makes your uh, your, uh, your your muscles, muscles bigger. It's your brain it was, muscle, yes, yeah. yes, it's your brain muscle actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, number nine is dark chocolate. Okay. Because that's it's good. very high in antioxidant. So okay. the the higher the coconut, the cocoa, cocoa uh, butter, cocoa butter in it, the, yeah. the higher, mm -hmm. the better. The more okay. antioxidant uh, antioxidant uh, uh, effects is better on on the brain. Oh, that's good news. Yes. Okay. So. Of course, milk chocolate is not that good. Mm. It, I, I'm not talking about nutrition, but I mean yeah. like the, the higher the coconut, it's, it's not good because it has less coconut. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking from this perspective. And then number 10 is what you just said before, is the walnuts. Walnut. Yeah. Walnuts are really good for the brain. There's a lot of types of nuts also that are good for the brain because they contain good fats. Mm -hmm. And um, they also we say that the shape of yeah. things, like if you look at... A walnut, it looks, it looks like, a, like brain. a brain. It even has two sides. Yes, it has two it has, sides. Exactly. Yeah, it has two sides. Left too. and right. Yeah. So this was about food. So this was the first habit, eating healthy foods. Mm -hmm. We gave them 10 types of food based on the book Brain Food from Dr. Lisa Mosconi. If you'd like to learn more about it, you can okay. uh, buy the book and, yeah. and read it. Uh, then the second thing is killing ants and when we say ants it's like the, the insect ants what do right. we mean by killing ants yeah. we're not gonna actually yeah, kill ants that needs to be explained yes yeah, we need to explain this actually. we're not gonna go run in the garden yes <laughs> definitely it's, it's not gonna help so ants is an acronym of a n t and mm. it was created by dr daniel amen mm -hmm. so he's a psychiatrist and he speaks about ants as a and T automatic negative thoughts or mm. automatic negative talk yeah okay. so what is Killing and why? Why did he use killing ants? If you think about it, when when you leave food on the table or mm -hmm. somewhere, and then you have one ant coming, 
few moments later, like literally minutes, you would have hundreds of right. ants rushing in to eat right. the sugar, to eat the food. Right. It's the same thing. It's applicable same to the brain. Same concept, right. If you think about something and it's an automatic negative thought, and I'm going to explain what is the automatic It'll bring uh, about it's gonna others. It's going to bring hundreds of, of thoughts and it's going to start destroying your, your motivation, your mindset, and mm. this will lead you to become less productive, okay. feel sad, feel mad. Yeah. So... And he speaks about automatic negative thoughts. He did mm. not say kill your emotions no, no. or feelings. It's yeah. the thoughts. The mindset. Yes. Okay. So a feeling is a feeling. We have to, to feel it. It's right. called a feeling. If I don't feel it, it's going to stay there. It's going to become more and more. While the automatic negative thought, that's for example, I would talk to myself and I would say, Michelle, you're going to fail. Why would you start an academy? Who's going to mm. believe you? Okay. You don't have the right skills. You're not okay. confident enough. You, I don't know, whatever thoughts that might come to the head, to our right. head, right. this is negative thoughts. So the right. moment I feel a thought like this, I kill it. Okay. I don't allow it to, to, so to you're grow. you're being reasonable. Sorry. You're being reasonable, right. definitely. Okay. And you will know how to filter thoughts. Mm -hmm. For example, if something bad happens and I feel bad for a friend, for a family member, someone is sick, this is not a negative talk. No. I'm afraid. I'm, yeah. I'm worried about them. There's a big difference. This right. is feelings. Okay. Thought is, is when something is not allowing me to advance in life right. because of my thoughts, of my mindset. Right. The mindset is so mind you're playing settings. games on yourself, sort yes. of thing. So I look ugly today in the mirror. For example. Something like this. For example. Okay. Okay. Instead, you could say, I don't like myself today, maybe. Why don't I like myself? Mm. Is it because there is something that I don't really like? Or mm. maybe is it something influencing me on social media? So once we start asking the right mm -hmm. questions, we can go back to the, to the deep meaning. Mm -hmm. Maybe I've been brought up in, in an environment where I was being told I'm, I'm ugly my whole life. Then mm. I started believing it. It, it became okay. my belief system. Okay. So all of this is, is part of... A-N-T. A-N-T, killing okay. ants. Mm -hmm. Then number three, so number one is healthy brain diet. diet. Yeah. Number two is killing automatic negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. Number three is exercise. Mm. Yes. Yes, I like that. So whatever is good for the, for the body is good for the brain. Yeah. And when we talk about exercise, we don't have to go for hours. No. And it's just lift being active. heavy weights, yeah. just being active. You could walk in your house, Regular go fitness out. Regimen, Definitely. Sort of, thing. Yeah. For, of course, if you can go out in nature, that would be. The best thing you can do for Why 10 15 is minutes nature so good for the mind and the brain yeah it's a good question they always i don't say have nature, an answer nature. but I, i'm gonna analyze with you i i, yeah. I would think it's it's the peace that it, that yeah. it brings to us because the brain for it to wander we were talking about before the episode about yeah, how the wandering. brain needs to wandering yeah. for your brain to wander it needs to to be in, a, in an area where there is not a lot of stimulation happening around you so again mm -hmm. this is my my analysis with you yeah. i don't know the right answer but right. i would think this this no could be a big role yeah, yeah so there are no distractions plus the wide open space. yes the, the colors yeah. the wide open space yeah. there's no pollution mm. you feel good no there noise pollution no noise pollution mm. no smelling pollution yeah. no light pollution like there's nothing you, you're not stressed that the car might come and mm. and i don't know spill water on you or whatever yeah. so it's the peace that it brings to us okay uh, i think at least this is how I see it for myself. Yeah, this is why it too. brings peace to me. Yeah. I have less uh, things to think about, so it leaves my brain to focus and to wander into new discoveries and new creativity and creating the connections that we talked about mm -hmm. at the beginning. So this was the, we were talking about exercise. Whatever is good for the body is good for the brain. Mm -hmm. It helps us bring oxygen to the brain, to feed the brain, nutrients from the food we're eating. It helps the blood flow, uh, it regulates our mood. It's mm -hmm. very important. There's so many studies about this. There's also a study about if you walk in nature and if you exercise mm -hmm. 20 to 30 minutes per day. It was a doctor, um, Suzuki, but I can't remember her David name. David Suzuki? Uh, she, she was a lady. Oh, no, that's a man. I will put it in the, we can, I can send you the words if you yeah, want to put it sure. down for yeah, the credits. Right. So she, she made, um, she made um, a study and mm -hmm. she, she saw that if you exercise, you could increase your creativity by up to 60 percent wow. up to 60 percent creativity. creativity by walking and by exercising mm -hmm. and you become more productive also because creativity once you're more creative you start trying to figure out things yeah. and apply them so this leads also to more productivity i'm trying to think it's i wouldn't like to to, to 
say it's like playing, but it reminds me of playing. It is playing. Yeah. If you want to learn, when, you have to play. Yeah, because yes. when I sat with my kids to play, yes. all of a sudden you're in a different kind of context. Yes. All of a sudden you're, you're obliged to think differently. Yes, yes. Same thing with my pets. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But it's the same pets thing. Pets are also very good for the mental health and I wanted to ask for you the about brain that. too. Because yeah. they, it's not because it's not like you look at, 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 at a pet and then your brain becomes good. It's not like, like this. It's, yes. it's, what, it's how you react to the pet. For example, if you're going to put a pet at someone who's scared of pets, of course it's not going to benefit right, their brain. Right, right. But if we're talking at a certain logic where you like pets or you like puppies and you see them, it makes you happy. And this helps you, um, uh, your brain's going to start, um, how do we say, yifruz, hormones. Is, how do we say It'll the word? build hormones. Uh, not exactly build, I think uh, construct or something like this. Yeah, it's, produce. Uh, produce, yeah, the happy, produce. happy hormones. Right. So this makes you more happy makes you more at peace. This is why it's good for you. Mm, mm. So this was about sports. Now, the fourth habit, we could talk about, like, the, only the 10 habits can take up to, uh, it's a, it's a one, one hour class that I give in my class, actually. In my, oh, really? It's a full You're, session. Oh, There's so many session. things Just to talk the about. Just 10 habits. Yes. Okay. So um, the fourth one is um, checking, checking up on your health at least once per year. Mm. Going to the doctor, asking her or him, uh, to check up your your blood uh, your blood um, uh, test, Cholesterol see if you have everything like that that could okay. affect your brain. Um, if you have any deficiencies, if there is anything changing in the hormones, so it's really good to do it at least once per year. So we oh, know okay. that health is good because it it can affect our brain okay. also mentally. It can affect so it this, and physically. Like so, this is something we have to go into. We have to do it once per year okay. for the brain. We we're always talking from a brain perspective. Like right. everyone would say, okay, it's normal that we have to get tested every year. But I mean, there are some types of, of hormone imbalances or, or, or deficiencies in vitamins that can lead to less efficiency in the brain. So Vitamin I'm, I'm, D? Yes, for example. Okay. So it could lead to depression, it could lead to, mm. to a memory problem, to focus, to mental fog. Mental fog is like mm. having fog inside this huge warehouse. Yeah. And then when you go inside and you receive information, you analyze it, you cannot see the information. You cannot organize and retrieve it because there are so, ma so much fog. Right. Then we were at number four. Then yeah. number five is, is positive peer group. Mm -hmm. This is extremely important. We, we talk about it, everyone talks about it so much. I'm gonna talk about it from a brain perspective. Mm -hmm. The people we surround ourselves with, you know the monkeys like monkey see, monkey do? Yeah. Somehow we do the same, right. without even knowing it. We are always being manipulated somehow. Mm -hmm. The only thing we can do is that, to be conscious about what's happening around us is to educate ourselves. Mm -hmm. So. Here, why am I starting it like this? It's just to educate ourselves to understand how the brain functions. Okay. Whoever is around us is definitely changing the way we see and we perceive the life around us. Mm -hmm. It could be for the good or for the bad. It affects us. It affects us even if we don't feel it. Because right. most of the time it's unconscious. Sometimes right. we, we go out with people and then we start using the same words as them. Mm. We start maybe, I don't know, maybe like stay, uh, walking like them, talking right. like them, the, the tone of voice, eating, like them. eating yeah. dressing like them, without even noticing. We start mm -hmm. liking the things they like. And the reverse is also true. They right. start liking what we like. This is why it's very important to know who we are surrounded with, mm -hmm. because this is having a huge unconscious effect on ourselves. Stay away from toxic the people. Definitely. It's not always easy, no. but again, once we understand, if we cannot stay, for example, some people would say, I have family members that are being toxic to me. Yeah. So what can we do? This is like a different topic, but then we move on to, um, to managing right. our emotions and managing ourselves around these people. We put barriers, okay. we start to work on ourselves. Mm -hmm. So if you need help, please get, get help from someone uh, who works in, in uh, who's a psychologist or yeah. someone in mental health, they can help you a lot on taking the right decisions. Okay. But now you understand why it's very important mm -hmm. to work on the positive It takes group. a toll on you when yes. you're around toxic people yes. too. You feel heavier. Definitely. You feel down, yeah. less, less productive, yeah. mental fog again, demotivated, yeah. and then eh, it's downward the whole way. So, and we say positive peer group, it's very important. It's not about positivity the whole time. Positive yeah. is people who tell you the right truth. Like, you can come to me and tell me, Michelle, real. you're doing this, you're, yeah. yes, this is yeah. the word. Yeah. Thank you. This is the word. Real. Mm. Real people who will tell you things the way they are. They will help you see what you're doing wrong the same way they will help you see and, uh, and celebrate your wins. Right. These are the, the, the positive peer group. Number six is having a clean environment. We were talking about it a few moments before. Clean as in hygienic? 
clean could be hygienic because okay. the way we look, the way we feel mm -hmm. can affect us. And here, hygienic is also very um, personal. Some people like okay. would like to have a big beard, long hair. I don't know, maybe they would like to have uh, a, a certain type of clothing. If they feel they are happy with it, their brain will be happy. Okay. So it's about how we perceive it when it comes to this. And then the clean environment also applies to our surroundings. Declutter. Um, what is declutter? <laughs> when there's a lot of things around you. Oh, so yes, yes, to, declutter. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. To organize yourself. Definitely, yeah. yes. Because unconsciously, your brain is, is, is getting so many information. It's receiving the whole time. It's receiving sounds. The air that is coming on our skin, our clothes touching us. It's processing so many information that we don't feel. And I can give okay, an example I later on. Okay, I have a on. question. Yes, tell me. <laughs> As a parent, well, my sons are older now, but it's when they were teenagers, their yes, rooms sir. were like a huge mess. I'm organized in my mess, mom. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say to that? Yeah, what yeah. do you say to that? Uh, that this this will have definitely it's gonna people can the good thing about the brain is that it can adapt. Okay. But there's a big so difference adapt between to adapting their, to their and mess. being efficient. So okay. you can be more efficient in your whole uh, mess. Okay. But if you remove the mess, you're gonna be even more efficient. Why would I spend my energy adapting? If I can just put everything in its place ah. and become even more efficient, it's like having I get I get it. So you skip some of, steps. Yes. To, towards efficiency. Uh, you you skip. It's 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 more about losing yeah. some of your focus and your. It's like when you wake up, you have a certain amount of focus and energy. Right. Right. And of course, this focus and energy is not something you're born with. It's something mm. that you train. You mm. can become more focused. You can have more energy. Or everything is okay. interconnected. How much you sleep, how, how you yeah. eat, and, and so on. So let's say we have a fixed amount of, of focus and a fixed amount of energy to spend during the day. My brain, if it sees that on my desk in my room there is everything around me is upside down, there's so mm. many things that I can't see, it can function. It will not stop functioning. If you see the desk of Einstein, it was always in a huge mess. But right. Einstein was, um, was used to it and he had a very high level of intelligence because he wasted a lot on it. So it was a small thing for him. Okay. But if we're not training the brain every day, I'm spending a lot of energy on, in my brain on like moving these things around, reorganizing right. in my head and trying to find the ideas. So it affects us unconsciously. Okay. This is why you have, the, uh, you have a psychology of colors, which colors right. to use, which lighting to use, mm. how would you, you, you impose power, how would you impose management uh, skills, Happy management, good management, bossy management, all of this mm. is included in the way we, t we speak, the way we wear our clothes, everything okay. is linked. So environment is very important. Mm -hmm. Clean, clean environment. Yeah. Exactly. Clean from noise, clean from smell, from the eyes, the mess. Mm. So the better it is. Clean and clear. Clean and clear. Okay. The better it is, the highest level of, of energy that we, we can save and use it somewhere else. Okay. So look at it from this perspective. That's a nice way to if think it's mass, about it. If it's a mess, it's okay. I'm not judging and I'm a mess yeah, myself. But you're wasting... Sometimes I'm a mess. Yeah, okay. Sometimes I don't feel like, like putting stuff uh, where they should belong. Yeah, it's, you put it's it fine. Yeah, yeah. But we're talking about how we act in, in general because what we do repetitively becomes a habit and our habits will define the way we think and our th thoughts becomes our actions. Our action becomes who we are. Right. So it's very important to. I was reading to, that quote this morning. Yeah. yeah. So it's very important the the to understand this. Mm -hmm. Then we have number seven is sleep. We talked about uh, the the neurotoxins in the brain that accumulate during the day. One of the very important ways of getting rid and flushing these toxins out is when we sleep. Mm -hmm. There's a really good book on sleep. Um, there are Walker, I think his name is. Um, it's excellent. There's a book that's called Sleep. I don't know if it's about if it's Matthew's book. We yeah. can also mention them. Like there's yeah, there's a lot will. of books. There's also yeah. eight tips we can talk about sleep. Maybe we can do it in a different episode because also in the course I have a full hour about sleep. Really? Sleep is that important for it the brain? It is. Like because I I listened to a talk from yes. the, the author of this book. Yes. It's fascinating. You think you know all they say. Yes. Yeah, but it's more interesting than you think. Yes. We think about thing. sleep as if it's the end of the day. Right. Well, actually, it's the beginning of a new day. While mm -hmm. you sleep, you prepare yourself for the next day to become more efficient, more energized, and just go and tackle the day and, and win your battles, whatever your battles right. are. They could be small things in family. They could be work. They could whatever you want. But right. it's the beginning of your day, not the end of your day. Yeah. So it's important to prepare yourself properly to sleep. Mm -hmm. It flushes out your toxins. It helps you store information mm -hmm. and there's something called 
you engrave the information. You engrave it in your طيب. in your memory when طيب. you sleep. This is why when we were kids, they used to tell us, the parents used to tell us, sleep, because if you don't sleep, you will not remember anything. Some people would spend the whole night studying and then go to the exam and then blank. There's nothing. Right. Because they didn't sleep. The information they took in, we took we take the information right. in, we analyze it, we organize it. The storage did not happen, the fourth step. Storage ah, did not happen. Okay. Why? Because let's say the brain, it's 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 a metaphor. Yeah, let's yeah, say yeah. the brain is a warehouse. During the day we are receiving this information, yeah. putting it at the desk. They just threw it away. Exactly, <laughs> and they're the like oh, they are punched <laughs> on the side. So at night you have like small brain cells running around your, your brain, to get picking up the information while you sleep and storing it and engraving it on your memory. Mm. If you do not go into the, 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 the whole cycle of sleeping, if you don't sleep well, the fourth step, that is storage, did not happen. Okay. So blank, you lose the information. It went in, but you don't know where you, you stored it. You don't know how you organized it. How much it's sleep gone. do you need? Uh, there, there's so many, there's so many um, studies about this topic. I don't know. I don't know exactly what could be a good amount of sleep. I personally, I sleep around seven to eight hours per day. Yeah. I would say if you feel good when you wake up, that's enough because there are also cycles of sleep. Right. So if you're getting the good cycles, but of course not like the four hour, four hour three hours is never enough. You need yeah. at least time to get the whole cycle. But again, I would say read the books and, and just do some trial and error and you will see if you feel energized or not. And there's so many things about sleep. Some people, they say you need six hours. Some, they say six to eight. Some, they say it depends on your age. Yeah. So um, I'd rather not give a number because I don't also. know, you know. Right. It's better to, uh, to, uh, to try for yourself. Okay. But of course, not less than six hours. No. This, uh, this I'm sure. Yeah, okay. Then after sleep, we have brain protection. Mm -hmm. The protection, it's, it's true that, that the bones around the brain is it's a very you tough... You know, this is something that we don't discuss enough. Yeah. But the brain needs, the head needs to be protected. Of course. This is what you're talking yes, about, right? Yes, brain yeah. protection. We yeah. need to protect it, not from a, man, not from a mental uh, standpoint. No, physical. From a physical standpoint. Right. So if we, if we ride a bicycle, if we ride a motorbike, mm -hmm. if we do some uh, extreme sports, if we do, I don't know, rugby, football, basketball, whatever you do, like try to, to protect your brain. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, I know. Yeah. But for example, for sure, bicycle and, and motorbike, we have to protect yeah, the brain. Definitely. Even though we feel that it's very strong inside, the brain is not that strong. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have any concussion from the outside, if you get hit very hard, it could lead to damages mm -hmm. in the brain. Mm -hmm. And this damage can affect the performance of the brain. Seat belt in the car. Seat definitely. I yeah. never drive my car without the seat belt. Mm -hmm. And this was because it was in grade. Even especially if you are in the back seat. Because I had to go through that for through experience actually. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I remember I think I was around 11, I used to live in France. It was back then. I had to do an, uh, um, I used, yeah, it was around, yes, around 12, I was around 12 or 13 years. And we did a presentation about um, safety in cars. Mm. And then I learned through a video that it was very graphic. It hit my, my head so hard. Wow. It's, it was very graphic. Right. And they used this technique, they used to use this technique to, to make people uh, remember it. And it worked. I remember, mm. my, I still remember the scenario till this day. Wow. So they say when you're in the, in the back right. and you don't have your seat belt, if there's a big crash, you, I don't know how much times you multiply your weight. For example, let's say I'm at 90 kilos. Oh, I should multiply, I, I think, five or ten times my weight and it splits times the speed and it splits, it, and I hit the people in front of me. So um, wow. this could lead to, a, to, to very severe injuries for myself and even for the people that have their seat belts on in the front. Yeah. So anyway, this is a, like another story. Well, my son actually hit, he hit his head from the top. Ooh, so yeah. he broke his neck. So Ooh. thank goodness nothing happened to his brain. Thank God, I mean, yes. This is a neck injury. Yes, it's yeah. a, it's it's very it's very like soft. The brain is mm -hmm. very soft, even though it's like this. But no, we have mm -hmm. to take care of the brain. Mm -hmm. And this was number nine, and yeah. the last one is stress management. Yeah. And I, I used the word management. I did okay. not say stress suppression. That's that's not related to ants. 
Um, and this is man. This could be stress out of anything else. It could be okay. out of anything that comes from the outside of the world, not only okay. my thoughts. So the other one is your inner world. Yes. This is the outer yes. world. Yes, and it's only your thoughts. It's how you think, how you perceive things. Right. While stress could be, I'm stressed because the plane is late and I have to, uh, I don't know, I have to yeah, go have and I have a meeting. Right. Uh, it's something I can't always control. Okay. So stress management, and as we said, we are using the word management. It's not about stress sup suppression. Whatever we suppress is going to outgrow itself tens of times right. so we have to manage the stress stress is good to a certain extent there are also it studies you. yes yeah. it keeps you going yeah. so if you use it as a fuel and there's a study where they, they show um, they, they made a study on people who know that stress is good for them people who know that stress is not good for them who believe that stress is not good mm -hmm. for them, and people who have no idea about it like it, they, they they don't care. No no opinion. Yes. Yeah. So they made they made some studies on them and they found out that people who believe that stress is something good for them lived longer. It gives you drive. Yeah, they yeah. lived longer. People yeah. who said it's gonna affect them, it did affect them. And people who didn't care about like there wasn't like not enough data to, to prove anything because okay. they were indifferent. Okay. So stress and good things is good for the brain. How do we manage stress? We can do mm. anything from what we said. From one to nine. From one to nine, exactly. Right. You can meditate, you can walk, you can... Listen to um, music. Listen to music. Dance. Actually, we forgot one. Or Art. I, I, for, I, I forgot one, the, the, the eighth one. So, so there's one that... The, so we no, said... Missy, I wrote a lot of stuff down here. <laughs> there's, something. there's something here. about new learnings. Yes, yeah, exactly. This, this is the one. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, a new learning, which is number eight. So we jumped mm -hmm. from seven, which is sleep, okay. up to nine. Right. So number eight is... Um, you see, this is what, because when, like, what I'm doing right now, this is the perfect example that we will never get to a point where we're not going to forget. We're always going to forget. But because the brain is organized, what I did now is that I scanned what I put on my list mentally. I don't you have anything on me. It. And I recalled that, okay, I yeah. did not talk about this point. You because I know where to look. It. You recalled Yes, it. I don't have okay. anything on me. I'm just right. like using my head. Yeah, I'm so, pretty uh, impressed that you're saying all these things you, thank by you. heart. So um, it's because I know where to store them. It's... And, and I'm telling you this just to, to tell people that anyone could be like this and even better. It's all about practice, knowing right. how to do it. So once I scan this, I, I remember that we have number eight. We did not talk about number eight. Right. It's new learnings. Mm -hmm. Anything that we learn on a daily basis, that could be, it could be one word in a different yeah. language. It could right. be one song, one name, yeah. uh, one item. This could help us, help us tell the brain that I am using you, my brain. I love you. I'm using you. Please mm. keep on Give growing. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. <laughs> yeah. And, and then you have you start having more brain cells. Okay. Uh, your, your brain starts creating more brain cells, puzzles. more connections. Yeah, games. Uh, anything. Puzzle, yeah. puzzle is good. Mm. Uh, Sudoku is good. Yeah. Anything like this is, is stimulating for the brain. Okay. But this works on the part of stimulating the brain, not on memory. Memory mm. is a totally different thing. Okay. Memory is about... Um, I, I have some brain games that can help memory that I post on my page. Yes. They're very specific and based on the science of learning on activating the five senses. The memory, you post the word games, yes. you mean those yes. are memory also? Yes. I'm going to explain why because a lot oh, of people okay. tell me I don't, I don't see why this can would be good. Can you explain the brain game before sure, for those sure. who haven't seen it? For example, what we do is I take one word, yeah. I break it down. I'm telling people how I create the brain right. games. So I take a word, I break it down into at least two or three syllables, yeah. and then I put them in different words. For example, um, creativity, mm -hmm. the word creativity. Mm -hmm. It could sound like create, right. TV, and T. Right. So it's a create, it's a TV, and it's T. Right. And then I put them aside, each one aside, and, and I modify their, their place so people yeah. don't guess it from them. So I would yeah. say like, this is a TV, a, a, a TP. People right. would click on TV. This is a, a uh. create, a plate. People would click on create. Right. This is a tea or this is a coffee. People mm -hmm. would click on, on coffee, on mm -hmm. tea. So now you have three pieces of the puzzle. Right. You take them and you rebuild the word. Right. So when you do this, you're actually helping your brain to create new connections oh, and okay. to rewire the brain of thinking differently. So now you see the things from a different perspective. So something that you already know, you're trying yes. to... Uh, so it's something that you already know. Okay. You broke it down into three things and then you rebuilt it again. So you're helping your brain to understand that I'm not oh. reading the word the same way it is. No, I am building the world. Okay. I have three words and out of the three words, I'm building a new one. Mm -hmm. And I'm using my sense of hearing also, which is very important in memory. Because create TV, T, it's mm -hmm. not creativity, it's creativity. Yeah. But it sounds like creativity. So it gives this flexibility in the hearing sense. Mm -hmm. and, and we become... Phonetics. Yes. It yeah. becomes easier for us to memorize. Okay. If you want to memorize a new word, for example table in Chinese. 
You know yeah. what it means? I always it's it's chosi. Right. Chosi. So if I want to memorize well, table in Chinese. Once, I think. Yes. Yeah. How would I memorize chosi? I'm gonna rely on my hearing. Right. What does it sound like? Chosi. Chosi. Josi. Walnut in Arabic. Walnut Jowzi. In Arabic. Jowzi. Yeah. Or my husband. Right. So I can imagine that this table is made out of, of walnuts. Mm -hmm. So next time I see this, I, I and I can link it to China, so I know that it's in China. <laughs> it was right? made in China. It was made in China, or maybe I am in China, and the table is full of walnuts. <laughs> and I can see the walnut. I need to see it. It should be visual. Okay. I see the walnuts all, all over the, the table. Now if I ask you, what is the table in Chinese? Josie. Josie. That's okay. it. This is how you use your sense of hearing. Okay. To, so this is why when you play the games on my page, it gives you this flexibility of, of hearing and, and formulating new things. Mm -hmm. So if you want to learn anything new, not, not only a language, a name, a language, whatever yeah, they, it is, it becomes that, faster. They say to do that for names or yes. relate the person to something. Sure, we can, we can also give an example. Yeah. Um, for example, if you're, if you, I don't know, let's say Mark Rosenwig. Professor Mark Rosenwig, he's, who is a, that? he's a professor who <laughs> discovered something very important. Now okay. I'm going to explain what he did before okay. we say how okay. to memorize his name. Okay. So Professor Mark Rosenwig discovered that he's a Californian psychologist and neurophysiologist. Mm -hmm. He discovered that if we feed the brain, if we feed, look at the nice name, it's like feeding the brain. If you feed the brain 10 new information every single second of your life, you don't every, sleep. Every second? Every single second, one second, one second, okay. 10 new information, and it's new. It's never the same information. How do you get new information? In you don't. He's just like giving an example of okay. how powerful it could be. But of course, you're not going to be able to do okay. this. But okay. if you do this yeah. for your whole life, you don't sleep, you don't eat, you don't work, you don't do oh. nothing. You're only memorizing 10 new information every second. Okay. It would take you your whole life, let's say on average 95 years. You wouldn't be able to fill less than half of your memory capacity. Wow. So back Jeez. to the 4.7 billion yeah. books. So he said, this is why I was talking and referring to the brain as if it's a warehouse. Mm -hmm. He said, Professor Mark Rosenberg, that it's the even brain... even bigger than Amazon warehouse. Uh, most probably, yeah. <laughs> that, even if you think about it, there are no 4.7 billion books anyway. Yeah. And even if they are, we, 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 we could memorize them if we had the right thing. Okay. So he said, it's not about not having enough space. We hear this a lot. I don't have space. Yeah. It's blocked. No, it's not blocked. We are tired. There's a big difference between we are tired and there's no space. There's a lot of space. And okay. actually, the space is the biggest challenge because the bigger it is, the harder it is to challenge, to, to manage. Mm. So once okay. you understand how to receive, That's going nice back to the way. five steps, right. how to receive, receive, how to analyze, how to organize, how to store. Excuse me. <laughs> That's the social media distraction. <laughs> no, this, I told you this is only like my parents. So most probably it's my sister. She's traveling. <laughs> yes. So I, I never let it. Uh, I never let my phone uh, distract me. I, I removed the whole notifi notification. Only my my wife and my family. Yeah, we're gonna so, have to get back to that sure, later. Sure, social sure. media and stuff. So right? we were at. Uh, okay. So back. I'm gonna start again. Okay. Fine. Yeah. So back to the five steps. We receive information. We analyze. We organize. We store and we retrieve. When we're storing, it's so massive that you go inside of it and you don't know where to look. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know how to manage the space, you start losing information. You don't forget it. Mm. You lose it. There's like a leak. Exactly. There's a <laughs> leak and then, you know, you're putting the... I read this book, I've put it on this shelf. And then it starts leaking and it, it goes down and it disappears. Okay. Okay. So you did not forget it. You, for, you lost where, where it is, the location of the information. Right. So this was the... the um, this was what Professor Mark Rosenwick found. Mm -hmm. You would never have a challenge of memory. It's a challenge of managing the massive space you have in your memory. Okay. Now, back to, the, to how we can memorize his name. Right. Mark Rosenwig. Right. Rosenwig. There are two ways. You mm -hmm. can either link the name to someone that you already know. For example, if you know someone whose name is Mark, right. and you know them very well, you can simply imagine them that they are the people who found about what we talked about now. Like okay. the memory is a massive uh, space and so on. Okay. Or it could be Mark. It's like a Mark. Oh, so right. you can Check imagine Mark. yourself. Yeah. You, you look at him. You, you need to have his picture in front of you. So you can link the name on him. Mm -hmm. On how he looks. Okay. So you can ma maybe imagine yourself drawing a mark on his forehead. A mark on oh, his cheek or whatever. Okay. And, and you okay. can see it. You have right. to feel it. Okay. You have to hold the pen and draw it like this. Mm -hmm. You draw a green mark, let's say. This mm -hmm. is Mark. Okay. Rosenwig. What does it sound like if you break it down in two? A flower. Rose and a wig. Yeah. So you can imagine him maybe, I don't know, maybe uh, um, holding a, a rose in his head and putting a wig on his head. Mm -hmm. So now you know that this guy, is, his name is Mark Rose 
We're spending the rose and the yeah. wig. Right. Mark rose and wig. Okay. How can you link him to what he did? You can just make a story about, for example, I don't know, maybe uh, like every second he would remove 10 petals from the rose. This this relates oh, to the I 10 seconds, 10 words okay. per second. Yeah. And so on. And just link the whole scenario together. That takes a lot of time to do the whole exactly. thing. Exactly. This is what I always get. <laughs> every time you meet yes. somebody, you have to yes. do the whole Yes, I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> exactly. This is the first thing I always get. And it's true. Okay. It's very true. It takes a lot of time. Okay. But at first, so it does take a lot of time, but we need to know that it takes a lot of time in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Same way, when you learn to speak English, when you were a kid, mm -hmm. you would say, I don't know, water, or, yeah. bah, or whatever. Yeah. You would make a sound. Yeah. Then the sound would, would become water. Then the water would become, I water. Then mm. I want water. Then I would like to have some water, mom, please. And then you oh, build your... That's a very polite kid. Yes, that's a very polite kid, exactly. <laughs> We're trying to, to do a good, uh, good impact on kids. So with time, this story, it happens in seconds. Mm. But until you get to the point where when you, you do it in seconds, exercise, you have right. to get used to it. Mm -hmm. The same exact way as speaking any language. Okay. This is a language of your memory. Right. You're learning a new language. If you want to become fast, you have to start slow. You have to mm. memorize one word at a one time. One step at a time. And then two words at a time. And then three, four. And then you become fast and it's just there. You know right. how to do it? It's second nature, as we say. Right. It's, it's engraved within yourself. Okay. You yes. talk a lot about... What's uh, the table in Chinese? Josie. Jo yes. You see, because you, you can see Josie on the table. What's the name of the, of the of, of Mark professor? Mark Rosenwig. Here you go. But I, I used another see. kind of picture, but it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. The, the picture should look like how your brain works. For mm. example, if for you, Mark Rosenberg is something else, it's fine, mm. as long as you can see it. Because our brains are different. It's like, um, uh, the brain, there are no two brains that, that think alike. Right. Even two um, twins, they wouldn't be the same. Right. So whatever works for you, just use it. As long as you're using the five senses and you're imagining what you're seeing. Right, okay. Because you're talking about visuals and auditories yes. and smells. I have two questions. Yes. So why is smell linked to memory? Mm. That's one. Second, each what I learned in my some of my studies and certificates is that each person has a different way to absorb information. Somebody absorbs it better visually. Somebody yes. absorbs it better auditorily. Mm, or yes. uh, I don't know if I said that right. Or kinesthetically. I mean, so how does how, how, how would you teach somebody if they have each a different way to learn better? Yes. So I would look at it. I'm going to start with the first part, which is about uh, smell. the smell. Right. Why is the smell so strong? Yeah. Because it's one of the... Remember, the first step is receiving information. How do yeah. we receive information? Through the five senses. So right. the smell is one of the senses. Yeah. It is yeah. one of the, of the channels which leads information. Right. To our brain. Okay. So when I smell something, I link it to something. So now, it's something unavoidable? Yes, of course, it's something. unavoidable. Because no, I mean the sense of smell more than the visual. If it's, if it's like more uh, like you, stronger, you mean? Yeah, because something might pass in front of you, you might not notice, but the smell, you can't avoid yes, it. Yes, yes. That's what I mean. Because you're breathing. If you're breathing from your nose, there is uh. no way. To, unless you're, you're breathing from your mouth, then you might not smell it. And okay. even though you're going to smell a bit. Okay. But it's there, you know, it's not, it's not something that you can't control. For example, right. if you don't want to look at something, you close your eyes and that's it. Yeah. Right? right. But your nose... You can't avoid. Because you cannot see the smell coming your way. Yeah. As if you see it, you would like close your nose and then maybe like it or happens. Or inhale more if it's yes, nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It could happen if someone is, is putting perfume on, you can't see them. But I mean in, in life in general, if mm -hmm. you're in somewhere in the mall and then you smell something bad and you don't know where it comes from, you cannot stop it unless okay. you close your nose. So why do we link emotions to, uh, to, uh, to the smell? Because mm -hmm. it's one of our senses. It's one right. of the options we use to, to receive information. Okay. And this could be something good and bad. Right. For example, Definitely. if you smell something that reminds you of, of your grandparents, a village, cooking maybe, mm -hmm. there's a very specific smell. Yeah. You could smell maybe the trees. In the, the trees village. when you were a kid in yeah. school, there was a very specific tree that you can smell. Yeah. And it takes you back in time. Yeah. Because this smell is linked to the memory and it's mm -hmm. stored, organized and stored. So the okay. organization means this tree means this school. This is how we organize it and this, this is how we stored it. Mm -hmm. So when you smell it unconsciously, you're going to remember what happened with you. It could be something good or something not that good. Okay. Now back to uh, why learning. people have yeah. some different types of learning. Some would be more visual, some would be relying more on their hearing. Mm -hmm. It's about levels. Okay. It depends about your life, how you've okay. been brought, uh, brought up, how you've been taught, how you experimented the world around you back to being kids. Mm. We would build castles and then someone would look at, at it and see just like a bump. 
but we uh, would see a, a huge castle right. with the doors and with everything. So whatever you focus on growing up or even now, you become you will you will have a better level of the sense. So I'm someone mm -hmm. who is very visual and, and auditory because mm -hmm. I use it a lot. I'm less I use less my sense of smell yeah. and taste because you don't have a choice really for the sense yes, of smell. Yes, if exactly. It comes as it comes. But some people like they have they, they call them nose like connoisseur. So oh, those who, who can okay. smell because they work on it and you right. become you can become a connoisseur, uh, connoisseur mm, also. like wine and exactly yeah, because okay. you you um, you train it so the idea i want to tell people is that no matter where you are now when it mm -hmm. comes to the senses you can um you can activate those senses as much as you want and you can increase the levels as much as you want same okay. way for intelligence memory focus so attention we can work all on of it. it of course there's always course. a choice the games help yeah. you work on the visual because you see pictures right on the common sense which is not a sense but like the common sense also right. and on the hearing mm -hmm. because creativity is not creativity it sounds like it so it gives right. you the, the the flexibility of building creativity and t creativity okay josie it's not josie yeah it is josie yeah. but it sounds like josie i'm gonna give a different example also for the table and show you how your brain is capable of memorizing it in different languages at the same time and not having a problem managing it. Okay. The table in Spanish is, do you speak Spanish? A little bit. Okay, a so the table is mesa, mesa, right? La mesa. Yeah, yeah. So mesa, what does it sound like mesa? Mesa. In mesa. Arabic. So Arabic. all you have to do is imagine yourself in Spain with a huge table with massive plates of yeah. mesa. You have tabule this big, you have uh, hummus, whatever yeah. you want that is yeah. there. And like, you can feel it, you can smell it, you have can to smell have it. Can we have pizza? Uh, on the table? Yeah. If you want, but oh, it's not okay. meza. <laughs> no, we it's can not have. <laughs> you can have it if you want. <laughs> okay. But that's gonna confuse you because if it was meza in, in Italy, I would tell you yes, include oh, the pizza. I see. Okay. So now you, you you're starting to understand how the brain works. If okay. I put pizza, okay. now I would understand that the pizza has nothing to do. Okay. But if I go back to it and look for it in a year, the pizza could make me double think. Is it? Am I sure it was? Mesa in Italian or in, in Spanish? Mm, so this okay. is why I don't use pizza here. Okay. So this is how you start like managing your thoughts, okay. organizing them. Okay. So Mesa is, is table. Yeah. And then uh, Josie is... Uh, table. Tish, for example, Tish. I don't know if I would spell it right. I don't speak tish? German. What's tish is in German. Oh. So maybe you can that's imagine... That's a table in German? Yes, Tish okay. or Tish. Oh, I don't know how to spell it exactly, but yeah. let's say Pronounce Tish. Pronounce it, you mean. Pronounce yeah. it, yes. Yeah. So let's say Tish. You can imagine maybe a tissue, a huge tissue oh, on okay. the table. So now, you like know, if I tell you, right. what is, uh, what table is a table in Chinese? Sort of Josie. Josie, because you know it's like walnuts. Yeah. And you know that you were in China when you saw this scenario. Yeah. What is table in, in Spanish? Mesa. What is table in German? Tish. You know them in three <laughs> languages in, in seconds. Yeah. Okay. This is how you manage it. It's all about the game. Again, people will look at it and say, oh, this is amazing. I love it. I see the potential, but it's going to take too much time. Mm -hmm. Yes, it will take too much time. You have to put in the, the beginning. Efforts. Yeah. But it's, but it's, this is it. Like yeah. every time people tell me this, I say yes, you're right. But you're missing one part of the sentence. It takes time, at the beginning. Right. But you'll then, save so much time later. Yes. Once yeah. you become so fast, it becomes second nature. And it's plus, in addition yeah. of the, to this, you you will rewire your brain to think differently. It's not only about memorizing what table means. It's about analyzing the, the information you're receiving. Now that you receive information through books through videos, podcasts, mm -hmm. anything that you watch, hear, listen, feel, mm -hmm. the information is going to go inside so much faster. It's going to be analyzed so much faster. You will know how to organize the information. Okay. If you are faced with a challenge in life, with a big problem, right. you will know how to take the decisions, how to build your thoughts patterns. You'll have more confidence. You have more confidence to yeah. tackle whatever is at hand. Mm -hmm. This is the power of the brain. This is why memory is very important. Because the brain, yes, there's a lot of people who can be very effective, very productive. But if you forget information and you have to go back to your phone every time or to, your, to, to a search engine, this, this takes the whole... Imagine right. you're on... Someone is, is getting uh, um, in a hospital. They are mm -hmm. getting treated for something. Mm -hmm. And then the doctor, she would tell him or who would tell him, wait, I'm going to go and gonna look online. And Google. For, yeah, like, <laughs> I'm going to Google it. It doesn't work this way. <laughs> we, we trust people. We trust doctors. We trust engineers. We trust people who feed us. Right. Because we know that what, are, that what they are doing, they have it built in within their brain and they yeah. know how to use it. So memory is they a organize big part. The information themselves. Yes. Okay. Memory is this generator of, of ideas. It, it, it keeps you going. Mm -hmm. it, it, 
it makes you who you are. You yeah. are yourself because of your memory. You know your sons. You know your, your, your husband. You know your yeah. pets. You know your family because you have a picture of them linked to an emotion, linked to a name, linked mm -hmm. to a feeling. Mm -hmm. And this feeling, this is the way. Yes. Yeah. So okay. it makes you who you are. It builds your character. It builds your personality. Memory is... How do you link intelligence yes. to all of these exercises? Because it's different. It is different. So, so memory is, if you want, is, is a bit structured. So you take information, you mm -hmm. analyze, that, 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 you put it in. It's structured. It's, it's like this step, this step, this step. Mm -hmm. Intelligence is what you do with the whole thing that you gathered. Oh, I so see. once you have a good memory, okay. you become more intelligent. Why? Because the information oh, is so there. You can become more intelligent. Of course, intelligence is not fixed and intelligence is not born. Some people would say, but some people are born intelligent. They might have an advantage, maybe uh, in their biology and the, the way mm. they, are, I don't know, in their bodies and their DNA. Yes, it might happen, but it does not mean that we cannot be intelligent. Intelligence. Oh, okay. Some people are predisposed to be more intelligent. But right. if those same people, there are a lot of studies on this topic, if those okay. same people are brought up in a bad environment, they will never benefit from it. That's very interesting. And the, the other way around is true. If people have difficulties in learning, I had a lot of difficulties learning growing up. Okay. This is why I did the academy. Uh -huh. So I come from, from somewhere where I had pain right. to, to, to memorize and understand. Yes. Yeah. So if you've been brought up or if the environment wasn't very supportive to, to help you grow your intelligence at any moment, at any age, you can decide to start training your intelligence and you can become mm. more intelligent. It's trainable. So it is related. Of course. Oh. So back to your question to explain why it's, uh, it's uh, related. Mm -hmm. Once you have the memory, the information, it's like having a salad. You have the cucumbers, you have the onions, you have whatever Lettuce, the tomatoes, yeah. whatever you want. Yeah. You have them inside stored, organized, stored, and now you want to retrieve them. When you retrieve them, you start creating something with you. This is your intelligence. You are using your intelligence to create something new with your information. Oh, okay. So the more information you have, right. the more potential connections you can create, mm. the more solution you can find, mm, the more you can okay. become creative. Okay. Creativity leads to productivity because you can start working on creating what you I have. I think inside. it's also learning that you, to focus and concentration, mm. no? What, uh, like because can you, when, you, when you learn how to absorb all of the information, yes. you're concentrated on doing this definitely, one thing. And definitely. This is something that everybody says, oh, I, I don't have, I, I can't concentrate. Yes. I don't have the concentration. Yeah. I have ADHD. <laughs> yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I hear that all the time. You yeah, know? me too, me too. We so should talk think, about this. Yeah, we're going to talk about this yes. now. Maybe it's a good time. So I think when you focus on doing something properly, you'll be able to achieve a lot more. Of course. Is that right? And then if you think about it now with what we said, we receive information. There is no way on earth that you could receive information and understand it while analyzing and organize if you're not focusing, mm -hmm. if you're not paying attention. Yeah, exactly. So they go hand in hand. Yeah. There is no like, it's not like I want to work on my memory. No. If you work on your memory, you are working on your intelligence, on your focus, on your attention. They go hand in hand. There mm -hmm. is no one without the other. Right. So it starts with attention and focus. And attention and focus. Attention is when I'm attentive to one thing only. Right. Uh, uh, excuse me, it's the other way around. Attention is when I'm attentive at everything that is going around me. Oh, okay. So it's attention. Okay, so now I'm hearing something coming from outside. I'm feeling something on my skin. I'm feeling my t-shirt on my, on my shoulders. Right. This is, at, I'm being attentive. Mm -hmm. And attentive is like now, I can give you some example. All of us, we blink. Right. But now because I brought to your attention that you yeah, blink, it's not feeling about... weird. And you're going to blink more. You're going to start feeling that you're... you're it, it's very heavy for you to close them, right? Okay. I can give you a lot of examples that you would hate your life. Because there are a lot of <laughs> I things... Don't want to hate my life. <laughs> exactly. There's so many things happening that we don't feel because oh. it's we're not putting the attention there. Okay. So this is attention. We look at everything and we feel everything at the same time. Focus is when you bring your, your, your attention to one thing only. Mm. So attention is multiple things at the same time. I can hear something. I can speak with you. I can see my someone passing I'm here. Focusing on blinking. <laughs> exactly, because you are focusing. You said it. You are focusing on this one thing. You are being atten attentive on one thing. Okay. So attention is everything. Focus in one is one thing. You can you can understand it this way. You can memorize it this way. Camera. We mm -hmm. all say let's focus on that subject. Right. So focus is one thing only, and everything else is blurred. Mm, that's a very While term, attention yeah. is attentive, is just if you memorize one, you will know the, the other one. So just memorize that uh, the focus is camera, one thing only, which means the other one, attention is everything at the same time. Okay. Okay. 
So, oh, did you want to say something else? No, so, so you, okay. you, you can't memorize if you don't have attention and focus. Right. That's, yeah. And you don't have, when you train your brain to memorize, you are training your attention and your focus. I want to get to the distraction part. Yes. So now when it comes to distraction, there's something very important that we should give an example. For example, yes. if I show someone, I don't know, like this, this pen. If I show this pen, and then people look at it, yeah. and they have no idea what it is. Mm -hmm. This is a memory problem. It okay. means that I might have some kind of challenges happening, something maybe I should get myself checked, because I don't know what is it. I think it's a, something plastic. I don't know what to do with it. I try to put it here, like hit something with it, mm -hmm. but this is not what I use a pen for. Mm -hmm. So this is a memory problem. If I don't know where I put my pen the last time I used it, I can't find it. This is not a memory problem. This is an attention problem. Mm -hmm. Because when I, when I finished writing, I don't know where I put it. Right. So I lost it. Okay. So the difference between memory problem and attention problem is that memory is, some, is when I see someone and I have no idea who they are. Mm -hmm. Even though they've been my, my parents for 10 years, I have no okay. idea who they are. This is a memory problem. Okay. Attention problem is when I forget something. I forgot my phone. Mm -hmm. I forgot where I parked my car. So yeah. if you go to the mall, and this happens to everyone, yeah. and you forget your car, you don't know yeah. where you parked, you go to the kitchen, you open the, the, uh, the fridge, you don't know what you're, what you're looking for. Yeah. You pick your phone, it's on your head, and you're looking for it. Yeah. It happens to <laughs> yeah. This is not memory, <laughs> this is attention. Okay. So we can train the attention, um, of course. We could talk about it in the future because it also it takes a bit of time yeah. but there are things we can do to train our attention i was thinking more like being distracted by social media yes this is a good how point that, how that is affecting our memory our concentration our focus on yes. a daily basis mm. on an hourly basis and even even sometimes uh, every minute or every yeah, second exactly. because we're getting notifications so yeah, exactly. it's it's like intrusion it's some it's, it's, it's not even by notifications we become like addicted yeah, you yes. know it's the habit yes. sort of thing you remember once, of course you remember, we talked about, about knowledge mm -hmm. and about understanding things. Mm -hmm. So the first step to solving any problem is being aware that there's okay. something wrong happening. Yeah. Once we know this, it's like we analyze what is happening. So we understand that something is happening. We start asking questions. Mm -hmm. Asking the right questions will lead us to having knowledge about this subject that is happening to us. Right. In this case, I'm feeling that the more I use the social media platforms, yeah without naming any, all of them, mm -hmm. because it's the same concept. Exactly. The more I use social media, the more I'm distracted, the, the less attention spam I have, the less time I can spend reading, doing something, and right. I get distracted easily. Exercising. Exercising, Anything, like, yeah. I, I just feel like depleted. What, what, depleted. Why is this happening? I'm just making sure it's Yeah, now. it's on, I can see. Why it. is this still <laughs> happening? No, because it blinked. <laughs> okay. Okay, see you doing. So why is this happening to us? We have on one hand, billion or, not, or sometime, no, not really, not, not yet, billion, billion dollar companies mm -hmm. spending money yeah. and studying how our brain works That's and what is our motivation. Yeah. Why do we do what, do we, what yeah. we do? Why, why do you think that this is the exact sound that they use? They've been putting millions on research and development to know which notification sound to use which color to use, which pop-up animation you would have. They know how much time we spend on the mobile app. So I'm not talking about this as if it's something bad. It could be something to our advantage. Right. If we learn and understand how it works, it's a platform. It is a platform. It's a if table. I could put properly. something bad on this table, toxic, and I could put books on this table and right. help myself mm -hmm. be better. So on this platform, I need to understand how it works. Mm -hmm. This platform is a business like any other business in life. They want to make money. It's profitable. It's yeah. a, it, it is a profit. It's not a non-profit organization. It affects organization. our lives a lot. Definitely. Yeah. So here, it's our role to understand how it works, to get the, no, the proper knowledge, so we understand and we, we're not manipulated anymore unconsciously. Mm -hmm. Once we understand that this is a business, we understand that they are doing a race on our attention. Mm -hmm. It's a race between platforms. Who can, who can take Patricia's attention and focus and Michelle's attention and focus and put it on their mobile app. Why? Okay. Now we go to the other question. Why do, would they want to do this? Mm -hmm. Because simply they, they want, want to, to want you to spend more, more time. Mm -hmm. If you spend more time on, the, the, on their page on, or, or on the uh, uh, platform, there is a higher chance for you to buy from the ads they're right. putting. Right. So if I buy a product that I saw online, this shows people who are putting ads on the platform that it works. Mm -hmm. So they start helping you and working. They start spending so much money on this and development to make you hooked. 
It's incredible if how much you. money, yeah, how much money they spend. A lot of money. To, well, I a don't want to say they to don't waste talk about your time, I, but I to, think, uh, to, to gain your time. <laughs> actually, they, 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 they take your time, but you waste your time. Yeah. So once you understand That's it... That's a better way to say it. Yeah. Because this is the truth. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, we have a decision. I don't accept to be a victim. I would never say, oh, I'm getting too much time on social media. I start by analyzing and by scanning. What is happening to me? I'm spending too much time. Mm -hmm. After spending too much time, this is happening to me, something bad. So now it's time to stop spending time and understanding why something bad is happening to my brain. Mm -hmm. Because I'm getting too much information. So the problem is not the platform. The problem is to understand that the brain can handle a certain amount of information. If I'm giving it okay. too much information to analyze, it gets tired. It's like a muscle. Okay. It's, it's very similar to a muscle. If you go on a treadmill for 10 hours and you don't stop, how would you feel once you go down of, of the treadmill? Isn't it better also to choose the information? Exactly. Okay. So first you have to choose the information, mm -hmm. plus you have to understand that it's, it's like the, the treadmill. You don't have to go too much time because on the treadmill, your body would give you signals. Like you would right. start sweating maybe, yeah. you'd feel like you have less energy, yeah. you can move less, but your brain doesn't really give you on the spot. It's oh. hooked. Then oh, when you I stop, see. you feel like a crash. You is feel it like, like I a, can't continue, I can't do anything, I can't feel like I'm productive. Is it like a substance, substance addiction or something? Uh, it is an addiction, it is a type of addiction, mm -hmm. yes. It is a type of addiction because, again, we are being unconsciously, um, we have people who are smarter than us, mm -hmm. understanding how our brain works, and they are using everything and all their knowledge to make you spend more time. Mm -hmm. Now, you have a choice. Mm -hmm. You can follow the people that help you grow. You can follow pages that have good content. Right. So this like is yours. where you play. It's always like it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And like yours also on YouTube, like you're shedding light on so many important subjects. Thank you. So we, mm -hmm. have, we have a big role to play, you and I. Mm -hmm. So on this huge ocean mm -hmm. that is full of, of fish and you have big fish yeah. and you have small fish, toxic fish, whatever. Definitely. It's for you to choose what you want to go and grab. Mm -hmm. The information you consume, you are con we say you consume information. It's like food. Yeah. So the more information we consume, the more it rewires. It's like we have wires in our head. It's mm -hmm. wired. Yeah. We have thought patterns. Why do we say patterns? It's a pattern of thoughts. Right. And it can be reshaped the way we want it to. The, the information we consume can help us build a good pattern that can help us grow or a bad pattern. Mm -hmm. So back to the attention and to the distraction. The phone is a big distraction. Mm -hmm. It is because, again, we explained why, because it's been, uh, money is being spent on designing a very user interactive that is very friendly, very nice. Mm -hmm. You get hooked, you get, you're swiping up, you're watching, you're watching, you're watching. Mm -hmm. If you remember, back in the day, we, we could watch a movie of three hours without blinking. That would be yeah. like, oh, it's we so nice. We can't do that anymore. Now you watch a movie every two, three minutes, you pick your phone and you look. Yeah, it's true. Does it happen to you or no? Yeah. Even yeah. if you think about the types of, of, of videos, yeah. everyone is going on this, every platform. Yeah. First, you would have like big, long videos. Mm -hmm. Then now you have videos 20, 30 seconds. So we are training the brain to, to be, um, to have an attention span of 20 to 30 seconds. Mm. I noticed that too. So you start being distracted. So even if the content is nice and you enjoy yeah. it and you need it, you stop watching. Why? That's true. Because the brain learns by repetition and exposure. Ah, okay. So the more you expose it to short videos, the more it, it is used to watching short videos. Okay. So the, the queue, the, we call it the habit queue. Mm -hmm. So the queue is becoming shorter and shorter. You're getting a reward so fast after watching 20 seconds that you, you just like looking for more rewards, more rewards. You keep swiping, more rewards, more rewards. So, you get tired at the yeah, end. Yeah, so how do we train ourselves or how do we help ourselves to be more focused or to just be more attentive to what yes. we should be more attentive to. I'm going to talk in steps. Okay. So step number one yeah. is to be aware. Yeah. So if I'm feeling down, if I feel like I'm not productive, before I start diagnosing myself with ADHD, mm -hmm. with any other uh, disorder, with mental health issues, let me start looking at my life. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. It could be ADHD, of course. I'm not saying no. It could mm -hmm. be mental health problems. Yeah. But I mean, let's start by analyzing what is happening so I can be have data. Also. Yes, so I can like, if I, if I go to a psychologist, I would say, this is what I, that is happening. This is one day of my life. This is what I do in the morning. This is what I do in the afternoon. So they can understand. They can read what I'm doing. It's okay. information. So I, so I start by measuring what I do in a day. I start how much, I, I measure how much time I spend on social media. Okay. And on each platform. And what, what am I doing on social media? For example, if you work, uh, if you have a page, you would mm -hmm. spend a lot of time on social media. It's normal. Yeah. If you're looking for content, you would 
spend a lot of time. Mm -hmm. But are you consuming just for fun and how much time? Okay. Once you understand this, you put a plan. Write it down. You write it down. You write, yeah. for example, Michal, I spend on X platform two hours per day watching videos. On X, on, on Z platform, five hours per day reading things, whatever. Mm -hmm. I write it down, I have it down, written down, mm -hmm. I can see it. Mm -hmm. Now that I have it, I start doing the other way around. Instead of, of so I can calculate, let's say I spend five hours per day on social media. Mm -hmm. My brain cannot handle fast change. If I change something like this yeah, very I fast. Yeah, I you'll be in withdrawal. Yes, yeah. I cannot do this because it's used to. So the brain learns by repetition mm -hmm. and exposure. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use this on my brain. I'm going to start repetitively exposing my brain to something that is good for him. Okay. I have five hours of spending time on social media per day. I'm going to say to myself, from now till 10 days, I'm going to start doing four, four. hours, 50 minutes. Oh, only just 10, 10 minutes Yes, plus? only 10 because we're looking at a long-term target we want to become for two better weeks or 10 days what for did? 10 days That's a it lot. doesn't matter you can okay. do one week 10 days okay. but the idea is to do it very slowly you could you 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 might see that i'm good with one week you can like start okay. training every one week some people would do it i would suggest minimum one week not less than this okay. even if you feel so good stick to one week okay maximum it could be 20 days if you're too uh, uh addicted let's say it's okay. not a nice word but if you're yeah. too addicted to your phone do it 20 days mm -hmm. one month i don't care okay. whatever works for you it should work okay so i don't care i don't care about about the the time i mean so yeah, you yeah. would see what time is good for you we start every 10 days we reduce 10 minutes so the first i st i do five hours my example is five hours per day mm -hmm. every 10 days i reduce it 10 minutes so mm -hmm. the first week would look like five hours the mm -hmm. second week would be Four hours, 50, 50 minutes. minutes. The third week, four hours, 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I bring it down up to the moment where I feel better. It could be one hour okay. per day. It could be two hours. It depends on your special case. There is no one formula for all. Okay. Some people need social media. Some people, they don't even need it. They do it for like fun. So right. they can go down to one hour, half an hour. You know yourselves. You Shouldn't know what you Shouldn't you need. fill your time with something productive? Yes, but you could, do this, you could do this also on social media. So you start on your social media instead of following everything around and letting the algorithm choose for you. Right. You spend your time somewhere where you can have good value, something that, that you like. Maybe okay. it's about learning a new language, uh, new culture, I don't right. know, whatever you like. It mm -hmm. could be something fun also. Okay. So it shouldn't be that serious. A good suggestion is to have two accounts. One account that is personal, where you go just to see your friends, to see the things that you like, your okay. hobbies, and one account to feed your brain. This account could be oh, like where you okay. follow no one. It's just an account. I have this. I have an account where it's only for me. I, I follow like i don't have friends or family on it right. i just have people that i look up Teach to you something. teachers right. someone who can teach me something mm -hmm. someone who can give me value so i have this and i spend more time on this account than i spend on my personal account okay and um, now what you, you asked me something specific uh, shouldn't you manage your time when yes. you decrease the time yes okay so it's so say you're yes, up to right. four four hours and yes. 30 minutes with that half an hour, you should be more productive with that half an hour instead of just sitting doing nothing. Yes, so exactly. So find something to do. Of course, with that. of course. You you would be you would be anyway. You will have to find something else. Mm -hmm. So you would see like you have have more time. Maybe I can go out. Maybe I can see some to friends. To reduce temptation. Yes, exactly. Do right? whatever you want. It doesn't have to be something very serious. You don't have like yeah, no. to, to stop Could be and anything. read. If you don't want to read, don't read. Yeah. But do something else because now we're looking at what we're focusing back to the focus on mm -hmm. one thing only, mm -hmm. and this one thing is to bring down to bring down our time on the screen, our screen time. Right. So I just want to focus on this for now. Okay. 10 minutes every 10 days, and I see how much I can go down. Right. And another thing is that to understand how the algorithm works on mm. all platforms. So whatever we spend more time on is like we are telling the platform, let's say you have a platform. Mm -hmm. I'm telling Patricia's platform, I like, I don't know, uh, tables. Mm -hmm. So every time I'm going to go on your platform, you're going to show me tables. Yeah. People building tables, people yeah. breaking tables, people, I don't know, uh, designing tables. Yeah. It's going to be the same content. So start being aware of this and spend more time on something you like so the, so, so the algorithm helps you build yourself instead mm. of help you destroy your brain capacity. Okay. Okay? So right. this is also another point. I uh, I'm, I feel like my head is like this. <laughs> I think, yes, I think it's, it's enough information. <laughs> For, and uh, I, I didn't even cover everything I wanted to ask you. There's, but I, there's so many things. But if you don't mind, about. maybe we can do another episode. Sure, sure, another, sure. Because there's so many more questions I'd yes. like to say. Sure, of this is just this. fascinating. We've talked before. 
Yes. And I even learned so much during the podcast just today. Yes, yes. There's, I keep learning every day. Yeah. With every, with every person that, that comes and asks for, for some support. Yeah, you're very generous. Uh, thank you, thank no, you. No, you are. I thank mean, you're, you. you're willing to share information and everything. Because uh, I, mean, I believe that this is this is the only way to grow. Because when I yeah. share something to you, like, you know, right now, you're, thang- you're telling me that you learned a lot. Mm-hmm. I learned a lot more. Because when you ask me about something, you're pushing me to go back inside of my memory. To, to remove the dust. <laughs> take the information back and give it to you. And, and the way refresh. I give it to you, yes, you're helping me refresh my brain. Right. And then the questions you ask, they might help me look at things from different, different mm. perspective. So it's very important to share. And I was telling that, that, that whenever people come, if they are clients or people who are asking just for a, for a small tip, mm-hmm. I learn a lot from them because everyone is different. It's, it's incredible. Yes. Yeah, it is. You can learn, like, I don't know, like, you would, you would need more, more space than that. that yeah. the, the, we said that the space is yeah. massive. Yeah. We're all no the same, yet yeah, we're so unique and everything that yes. we just learn so much from yes. each other. When it comes to the brain, I always tell people, when you want to um, invest in your brain and work on improving it, right. don't think about it as if it's the end. It's not like you take a course and that's it. It's right. the end. Now I know everything. No, right. it's the beginning. Okay. The course, the book, the podcast, whatever you take is the beginning. You took the information, you analyzed it, organized it, and you stored it to retrieve it. <laughs> when you're going to retrieve it, you're going to do what with it? Can you're going to build something new. Okay. Right? Yeah. So tell me the five steps using the, the movement. Using the movement? Yes. Receive, analyze, <laughs> organize, exactly. Store. Oh no, the key. Yes. And then... So you see, your brain told you, oh no, the key. You know, because you are using your sense <laughs> I of touch. all the terms. It's fine. Try, try to find them. Try to find them on your own. So what, what am I doing? So receive. I'm receiving. Right? Store. This bar is this. It's Where? like the loading bar. Yeah, the loading bar. So it's a common sense. It's not store. It's too early to the store. I'm just, I just received them. It's you the... receive. What? I analyze. I analyze. Right? I oh, analyze. analyze before. Yes. Okay, store. Because analyze means understanding. <laughs> so you receive. I feel like I just failed the test. <laughs> no, no, you did not. You can remove this anyway. No, You're I won't. You're just doing. So you are receiving, right? So, yeah. so, so actually, analyzing. The thing about, I'm going to tell you something that, 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 you, that we just did together. A lot of time we can memorize. The brain is so good at memorizing if you, if you use your senses. Yeah. But in addition to memorizing, we need to put the story behind it. So I'm okay. receiving Seeing, what? The information. Analyzing. Now that it's here, I have to analyze it to understand it. So right. analyze. Once I analyze, I start storing. Organizing. Organizing. Right? You organize yeah. it because Sorry. you're going to say, right. I'm going to put this here, this here. And I wrote and this down now before. You store. <laughs> it's fine. You're going to see that, you, that you're going to memorize it now. Yeah. And then you remove it. And then so I'm going to give retreat. you another example. Yeah. And for everyone else who is watching, when okay. you go to the supermarket, mm-hmm. you bring something to, to your house. You analyze, okay, so this goes to the bathroom, this goes to my, to my room, this goes to the kitchen. Yeah. So you're analyzing yeah. and you're organizing this them, right? Let's go in my mouth. Ma- for me, uh, there's a lot of things that I bring to, to, to eat. So you have like things for the toilet, things for the kitchen, for me it's the big, yeah. the food, and then things for the room or whatever. I organize them. Mm-hmm. Now I store them. This I pick up, I put in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. This I take up, I put in the bathroom. This right. I pick up, I put in this, uh, I don't know, in this... Uh, Drawer. Right. So this is the receiving. Mm-hmm. I analyze and then I organize. organize. I cannot store be- before right. I understand and okay. I organize. I mean, and you're I not going to put food in the bedroom. For example. Right. So what are the five steps? Receiving. Yes. Analyzing. Yes. Organizing. Yes. Storing. And then finally. Retrieving. That's it. It's a, it becomes a lot easier because now you've seen it. Like <laughs> you took something that is very similar. Like it's. An you're exam. buying something yeah. from the yeah. supermarket. Yeah. So this helps a lot. It's always good to, to give yourself examples, whatever you want to memorize. Mm-hmm. Always try to make it very simple. Even though it's super complicated, there is always a way to, to make, make it, it simple. simple. And Einstein, he, he used to say that if, if, you can explain, if you can't explain something to, um, uh, I don't know if it was four years old, let's say, yeah. four year old, four year old right. you, you, you don't understand it yourself. So, yes, that's so, true. You reminded me yes. of this. That's true. It's very important to yeah. make things simple for the brain because mm-hmm. you are consuming information. Make it digestible. Make it in small chunks. Yeah. Chew it very well. The okay. chewing part here is the anal- uh, analysis right. and the organization. Right. So, uh, yes, as you said, there's so many things we can talk so about much. the brain. Oh, my God. But you, you made it digestible and chewable thank you, thank and you. everything. It's just uh, the way you. you communicate about it and teach yes. it. It's just, 
It's excellent. You know, so thank you so much. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, just the last thing, yeah. I do it this way because I had a lot of difficulties mm -hmm. um, to understand how my brain works. Okay. So I grew up believing that I have a bad brain. Oh. So this is why I literally do it from, from all my heart. It is right. my business, you it's are. my full-time job. I right. left everything to do this academy. I don't right. work anything else now. What was the click that made you realize that you can uh, use your brain? Or just, yes. just have it built up like this? You know, when I was in school, I had very bad grades. Uh, I wasn't good. Okay. In university, it took me a lot of time to finish also. Oh, I, because that's hard I didn't to know. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Because the, my friends from university or school, when they see my, what I'm doing now, they, they don't believe. They're like, are, wow. are you kidding us? Like, right. the, why would you work this at uh, this thing? Like, you yeah. weren't that good in school or university. Ah. So um, um, when I finished uh, school, I started working and I was doing good. I was... Mm -hmm. um, I was growing You're in my productive. work, I was yeah. productive, mm -hmm. I was changing jobs, getting promotions, and it was going well for me. Mm -hmm. And I remember that people used to tell us that if you're not good in school, you're not going to be good in life. Mm -hmm. I'm, not saying, I'm not saying this now, because people will take this, children, and show it to their parents and tell right. them, look, Michel was not good, and now he has an academy. Yeah, no, but you this is not the point. It. Exactly. You worked at it. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. the point I want to show is that I wasn't good because I didn't know, I didn't have the owner's manual. Mm. And now I've, I've built a certain course that is an owner's manual to help people memorize. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do it on my own. And it could this be for was any field or any topic or anything. Exactly. Learning how to learn is for anything. Yeah. Whatever you want to do in life is, yeah. if you want to put your shoes on, you have to learn how to put them right. on. Anything we do in life, we have to learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. So once you have the science of learning, once you learn how to learn, you can learn anything you want. Design, uh, dancing, cooking, mm -hmm. languages, you, whatever you want. You can drive a truck if you want yeah. because you know how to do it, how to organize, how to receive the information, how to analyze, organize, store and retrieve. So for example, in a truck, yeah. the store part, you would know like what is the type of, of engine oil you should need. How right. would you turn if, I don't know, if you're going up a 60 degree hill. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm giving random examples. Yeah. It applies to anything in life. So wh wherever you are now, whatever you feel about your brain, if you feel like you, you are demotivated, like you don't have energy, you don't have the knowledge to start, it's normal because you haven't been taught how yeah. to use your brain. It's not true. Yes, it's not true. It's, it's not, just... You have the potential to you do don't, everything, or if to you develop want, it. Exactly. You have the potential to, de to, to develop it or mm -hmm. you can also tell yourself, I don't know how to do it yet. You can do it. You can do it. So you don't know how to do it yet. And the yet is the most important part of the, of the sentence, yet. Right. Which means that the, after the yet, there is a learning curve that goes up and that starts teaching me what to do and how I can optimize my brain, mm -hmm. build my confidence, improve my intelligence. And I'm saying improve my intelligence. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying build your intelligence because yes, you there is no one on already. Exactly. exactly. So it's just types of intelligence. So that's That's the, great. So if people want to learn more about you, they can go into your Instagram account. Yes, yes. My Instagram account is the Brainer Academy. Yeah. And uh, they can reach it out. Right. Sure. And they can also reach out to me. I can also leave the, I will give you the number. Yeah. They can okay. talk to me. If they need help, I'm very happy to help them. Uh, if they want to take the course, I'm also, the, the, I would be very happy to have them with us. Yeah, so whatever they want to do. It's I, so well done. You gave you, me a glimpse. You. It's it's really captivating from the first thank you. second. I used There's, everything I learned and the yeah. meta learning to build it. I it's never amazing. used to design. Yeah. I literally learned how to design, how to gamify, yeah, yeah. based on the science of learning. Yeah, I told yes. you I felt like I was in a movie theater. Thank learning. you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if whoever has time, they, they shouldn't miss it. Yeah, yes, it's of uh, course. something that will stay with them forever. It's, it's a lifetime. Yeah. I believe that it, it can help them. If they if they uh, commit and yeah. they are disciplined and yeah, they do exactly. the like the whole you have course, to have the will. yes, of yeah. course, like anything else, like everything. If exactly. they have the will and the, and they they are committed to yeah. to finishing the levels, even if they take one level, yeah. it can make a huge impact. It does. Yes, it really does. Thank you, Michelle, so Thank much. Thank you, Patricia. And I'm looking forward to the next time. I already Me have too. my questions ready. Me too. I'm very excited. <laughs> we can do it as many times as you want. Thank I'm you happy so much. To, to share as much as possible I and to learn from you too. Yeah, I Thank appreciate you. you sitting. Oh, and lending us your home to uh, do this, this podcast. Is, this, as we say in Arabic, this is also your home. So you're the Thank most you. welcome. Thank you for coming also. Thank you so Thank much, you. Michelle. We'll see you soon then. Akid, we will see you soon. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.